when a plane explodes 33,000 feet in the air, the most unlikely thing is that anyone aboard the plane will survive. And yet, on January 26, 1972, 22-year-old Vesna Volovich did just that. As a result, she became the Guinness World Record holder for surviving the highest fall without a parachute. In a miraculous turn of events, Volovich not only survived a tragic bombing that ripped a plane apart mid-air and killed 27 other passengers, but she also went on to live a full life, becoming a national heroine and even getting married. But this survival did not come without its costs. Memory loss, survivor's guilt, and a spine so twisted that she would walk with a limp for the rest of her life. Nonetheless, the question remains, who was Vesna Volovich? And what insane kind of luck allowed her to survive what should have been the most tragic fall in history? January 26th, 1972. It is evening on a hillside outside Czechoslovakia, which we now know as the Czech Republic, and Bruno Hanka has just discovered the most shocking thing. Amid the wreckage of an airplane torn apart by an explosion, a woman is screaming, her turquoise flight attendant's uniform soaked in her blood, her feet bare. Who is she? Her name is Vesna Volovich, and she has just survived a 33,000 feet fall, breaking the world record for surviving the highest fall without a parachute. Volovich was born on January 3, 1950, to Serbian parents. Her father was a businessman, and her mother was a fitness instructor. As a young woman who loved the Beatles, she traveled to London to improve her English language skills. During her exploits, she discovered her love for traveling, and when she saw how sharp her friend looked in her flight attendant's uniform, she thought, why shouldn't I be an air hostess? As an air hostess, she could see as much of the world as possible. So, she jumped at the opportunity to become a flight attendant on JAT Airways, Yugoslavia's national flag carrier and the most dominant airline in the country. Before this, Volovich had low blood pressure. She felt this might make her fail the medical exam, so she drank several cups of coffee before the exam, hoping to keep her blood pressure high enough. And it worked! She was enrolled in the flight attendant training program. Eight months later, her low blood pressure would keep her alive in the plane crash that killed every other person aboard. On January 25th, Volovich was asked to join the crew of JAT Flight 367, flying from Stockholm to Belgrade. She would not even have been on the flight had she not been mistaken for one of her colleagues who shared the first name Vesna with her. But Volovich, with her love for traveling, agreed nonetheless, seeing it as an opportunity to see Denmark finally. Flight 367, a McDonnell Douglas DC-9, had two scheduled stopovers, one in Copenhagen and one in Zagreb. In later interviews, Belovich would reveal that her colleagues had a peculiar behavior that day. They seemed somewhat downtrodden, preferring to sit in the hotel and go shopping. Everybody wanted to buy something for his or her family, she recalled, so they all went shopping. Even the captain, as she recalled, spent 24 hours locked in his room refusing to go out at all. She said, They seemed to know that they would die. They didn't talk about it, but I saw. I felt for them. At 1.30 p.m. on January 26th, the plane left the Stockholm Arlanda Airport and landed at the Copenhagen Airport at 2.20 p.m. It was there that Volovich and her colleagues boarded the plane. At 3.15 p.m., Flight 367 left Copenhagen Airport with 28 passengers and crew. Exactly 4.01 p.m., barely an hour later, an explosion tore through the plane's baggage compartment. Only Volovich survived, with a fractured skull, two broken legs, three broken vertebra, one of which was utterly crushed, a fractured pelvis, and several broken ribs. Bruno Hanka, who had been a World War II medic, found her and was able to keep her alive until rescuers arrived. Who bombed the plane? Of all the passengers that deplaned at the Copenhagen airport, Volovich and her colleagues observed one man who seemed terribly annoyed. According to her, the man might have been the one who planted the bomb on the plane. She reasoned that he must have checked in a bag in Stockholm, got off in Copenhagen, and never reboarded the flight. 
On the day after the plane crash, the Swedish newspaper Sveilposten received a call from a man who described himself as a Croatian nationalist, claiming responsibility for the bombing. Was it the Croatians? The period during which the plane was bombed was rife with tension and violence between Yugoslavia and Croatia. Croatian nationalists carried out about 128 terrorist attacks against Yugoslav citizens and military targets between 1962 and 1982. Upon further investigation, the Czechoslovak Civil Aviation Authority concluded that the explosion was caused by a briefcase bomb planted by the Utatse, a Croatian separatist group seeking independence from Yugoslavia. But no arrests were made. On January 26, 1972, the same day as the bombing of Flight 367, a train traveling from Vienna to Zagreb was bombed, injuring six people. Volovic spent several days in a coma. When she finally woke up, the first thing she asked for was a cigarette. She was treated in a hospital in Prague until March 2, 1972, and was then flown to Belgrade, where she was further hospitalized until June. The injuries she had sustained paralyzed her from the waist down. She underwent several surgeries to restore her movement, and she had a quick and easy recovery. In 10 months, she was able to walk again, even though she now had a permanent limp as a result of her spine injury. In an interview, she attributed her recovery to her Serbian stubbornness and a childhood diet that included chocolate, spinach, and fish oil. The crash had devastating effects on Volovic's memory. She suffered a brain hemorrhage and had total amnesia from the hour before her fall until one month after. The last thing she could remember before the crash was greeting her passengers as they boarded the plane. Her next memory is of her parents in her hospital room one month later. She first learned about the crash from her parents two weeks after she was rushed to the ER. Later, when her doctor showed her the newspaper headline about the crash, she fainted and had to be tranquilized. Volovic was not the only one who was affected by her fall. Her parents had to sell both of their cars to pay for her treatment. When they both died a few years later, Volovic felt that their lives had been ruined by her fall. Otherwise, they may not have died prematurely. Nonetheless, Volovic lived a good life after the plane crash. Since she had no memory of her fall, her love for traveling continued to wax stronger. In September 1972, she expressed her desire to continue working as a flight attendant. She was instead given a desk job because JAT feared that her presence on flights might attract too much publicity. In 1977, she married Nikola Brenka, a mechanical engineer. They divorced in the early 1990s due to Volovich's chain smoking, which Brenka disapproved of. Volovich also had an interesting social life after the crash. She granted many interviews with the press and became known as the Cold War heroine. She received a decoration from Yugoslav President Josef Tito and became an honorary citizen of Srpska Kamenice, where the plane exploded. She even had a song dedicated to her by Serbian folk singer Miroslav Ilic, titled Vesna the Stewardess. <laughs> At a London gala in 1985, the Guinness Book of World Records recognized Volovic as the world record holder for surviving the highest fall without a parachute. Musician Paul McCartney had given her the award, a big deal for the Beatles lover. By surviving a 33,000 foot fall, which is approximately 10,160 meters, she had surpassed the record of Ivan Chisov, a Soviet Air Force lieutenant. He bailed from a military aircraft flying at 23,000 feet. Other people who have survived similar falls include Alan McGee, an American airman during World War II who survived a 22,000 foot fall, Nicholas Alcamade, a British tail gunner during World War II who survived an 18,000 foot fall, and Julian Kepke, who survived a 9,843 foot fall, and then survived 11 days alone, wading through the Amazon rainforest when she was just a teenager. Volovich was also very politically active. In the 1990s, Volovich was fired from JAT for speaking out against Serbian statesman Slobodan Milosevic and participating in what they called anti-government protests. This incident did not result in Volovich getting arrested because the government feared the backlash her imprisonment was going to cause. She, however, 
continued to speak against the socialist government and later campaigned on behalf of the Democratic Party of Serbia. Amid her bubbling life, how exactly was the survivor of the world's longest fall faring? She wasn't thinking of her fall every day, but she admitted to battling survivor's guilt, especially when people commented on how lucky she was. She said, I don't know what to do when people say I was lucky. Life is so hard today. She sometimes felt that her parents would have not died so early if not for the accident. But Volovich faced all of this with stoic optimism, believing that, if you can survive what I survived, you can survive anything. She declined therapy and turned to religion instead, living the latter part of her life as a devout Orthodox Christian. So how did Volovich survive the crash? A food cart, a heavily wooded and snow-covered mountainside, and enough luck to last a few lifetimes. Other passengers fell to their deaths when the plane's cabin depressurized, causing them to be blown out of the plane. But Volovich was trapped by a food cart in the aircraft's fuselage, which broke away from the rest of the plane and landed in a heavily wooded, snow-covered mountain that provided a cushion for her fall. Air safety investigators believe this was the reason why she survived. Her doctors agreed with this conclusion, adding that her low blood pressure caused her to quickly pass out after the cabin depressurized, preventing her heart from bursting on impact with the mountainside. In the end, it was the very thing that nearly prevented her from becoming a flight attendant that saved her life. Volovich lived the last part of her life on a 300 euro per month stipend in her Belgrade apartment. Her health had deteriorated over the years due to a heart ailment she had been battling with. On December 23, 2016, her body was discovered in her room. Vesna Volovich had lived a full and exciting life and had died at the age of 66. On December 27, 2016, she was buried in Belgrade's new cemetery. <laughs>